right now we are at the Blazing Paddles pre-paddle party and we have all kinds of kayaks and stand-up paddle boards. Really happy to be here. We're just gonna have fun. Where to begin if your fate is cast upon the wind? We got our carbs in last night, so we're ready. <laughs> yeah, carbs we're... and wine. I feel amazing. You know, this is such a great event. It has gotten like national attention. 700 people on a river like this uh, is uh, is great, but it's uh, controlled chaos. Jim Ridge really does a good job getting us all together and all right. making this happen for us. All right, uh, great to see you. Jim. We have ourselves right. a beautiful sunny day after experiencing a deluge yesterday that filled the river with Showers debris. And storms moving through. That's the view at 10 o'clock tonight. And we are still navigating the logistics of hosting an event on a river full of woody debris. Blazing paddles are. Just based on watching the launches this morning, you might have set a world record for the most dogs paddling the Cuyahoga <laughs> right, River today. Right. We think Blazing Paddles Paddle Fest is a great example of if you create an event that people are excited about, they will come. They will. They have come, which they is have come. nutty. We've had over 700 paddlers from 18 states. You know, this is rec you know hashtag recreational tourism. And who knew that a river that served as a pipeline for industrial pollution is now a conduit for tourism and recreation? Anybody that tells me that environmental regulations are bad business, I'll say, look at what's happening on the Cuyahoga River and tell me that that kind of business activity would still be happening if the river was in the same shape it was 54 years ago. It's very exciting to watch the progress over the past 50 years. And to watch all the species of uh, birds, fish, animals come in and use the, that's, that's how we know it's it's getting cleaner. We have over 70 fish species in the Cuyahoga River, and that's really awesome, when 50 years ago, there were only two or three. Honestly, once you're out there on the water and you're enjoying yourself and you're looking around, you actually get to be a part of nature and you're a part of the water and you see the fish and you see the birds, the herons, the eagles, everything, it brings you more in touch with that kind of thing and you start caring a little bit more about it. The casual people who get on the water, they start to see it and they start to develop, I think, the same consciousness for, for um, what do we need to do to make this better. These communities actually get people together, and that's kind of awesome. Like, I've met so many people, like the young lady here and a bunch of my friends over there. It, it, I like the thing. <laughs> nice job, guys. Thank you again. Hey, Jim. I was watching you make that put in. Yeah. That was... You know, it's just like, I gotta watch this, as yeah. a matter of fact. Well, the, the fun one's gonna be the uh, the seated paddleboard. That's coming next. I love seeing new audiences having an opportunity yeah. to experience the Cuyahoga River, and you guys certainly yeah. make that happen. All of this progress is only made possible by uh, people in the community coming together, and we're, we're reaping the rewards. We're seeing the great results. Absolutely. Yeah, the community is what's impacting the river, because the river needs us to heal it, um, and that's what everybody's here to do. People far from our zip code still have this 54-year-old notion of what the Cuyahoga River is, and when they see that river full of kayaks, canoes, and paddleboards, they'll go, hmm, maybe we've misjudged this river.